Alright, so as many of you know, I've recently been playing through every single Five Nights at Freddy's game. However, they aren't just regular playthroughs. Some may categorize them as evidence of insanity or whatever. Regardless of what you think they are, they always end up being absolutely terrible ideas, and this one is no different, because the next game in the series is Five Nights at Freddy's Pizzeria Simulator. This game literally has everything you could ever ask for. Crates, animatronics that look like Jimmy Neutron, clowns that like children a little bit too much, and of course, candy. But today, we don't care about any of that. The only thing we care about is our equipment. Throughout the night segments, we're provided with various pieces of equipment that we're supposed to use to help us beat each night, such as audio lures, faster downloads, and motion detection. However, if I'm caught using any of that equipment, Funtime Chica will know that I'm a bitch and I just can't let that happen. So that's right, in today's video, we are going to be completing the entirety of Five Nights at Freddy's Pizzeria Simulator without any equipment. The rules for this challenge are going to be pretty simple. First off, we need to complete the entire game. More specifically, we need to get the completion ending. Basically, we need to complete the entire game while salvaging every single animatronic, and I'll explain what that means in a little bit. The other obvious rule is, you know, we can't use any equipment. This means we're not allowed to purchase any upgrades from the equipment tab in our monitor, such as a quieter printer, and we're also not allowed to use any of the tools, those being the motion detector, audio lure, and silent ventilation. And in an attempt to make this challenge as difficult as possible, I'm also going to be accepting every single sponsorship that I can throughout the game. So there we go, those are the rules, that is the very painful challenge, and without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Alright, so before we start the actual challenge, I'm just going to quickly explain the gameplay of this game, because it's not as simple as just sitting in the office with my ass cheeks glued to a chair. First off, the game is quite literally split up into two different things, the Five Nights at Freddy's part and the Pizzeria Simulator part. The actual pizzeria simulator part of this is exactly what you think it is, it's just decorating our own pizzeria. We get some money at the start of the game, and we go through a bunch of different catalogs, purchasing items to decorate our pizzeria with, like a pool for kids to drown in. This part of the game has absolutely f nothing to do with the challenge at all, but I just want to have some small amount of fun, so just let me play with my ducks and leave me alone. The other part of this game is of course the Five Nights at Freddy's part, where we sit in the office, which is a part of the ventilation system, I guess? I don't even know where I am. But we sit in a room with a computer and vents to our left and right, which is where the animatronics are gonna come from. And simply put, our job is to complete a bunch of tasks on the computer without being jump scared by the animatronics, and once we finish every single task, we can log off and finish the night. The nights themselves are a lot more complex than that, however, I'm going to be talking about them more when they actually matter, so let's just get into night one. One quick thing I do want to say before I start talking about the actual night is, if you want to see any of the proof for this challenge, you can go over to my second channel, Chicken Ninja 43 On that channel will be the footage for every single successful night attempt, so if you wanted to watch those in full, you can. And that's basically all I wanted to say, let's talk about night one. So as you saw from that intro card, this night literally has f nothing. When we start off the game, we purchase a Freddy Fazbear's Pizza location, and we're basically just told one thing, don't kill children. And once we're told that, I instantly accepted that rules are f stupid and kids are probably gonna die. We're also given a nice $100 to completely decorate our pizzeria. With that money, I bought some very important stuff. A drowning hazard, a hippo, and my favorite arcade game of all time, Drunk Driving Simulator. You might be thinking that this is absolutely useless, and you'd be right, but there's actually a decent reason as to why I'm doing this. At the beginning of every Tycoon segment, we're given 10 different game tokens that we can use to play the items that we have in our pizzeria. Obviously, this won't apply to every item, because it'd be really weird if I could play with Mr. Hippo. But in the case of my duck pond and arcade cabinet, we can actually play them, and if we perform good in the game that we're playing, we're actually given money. In addition to that, I was also given some extra money by accepting the Fizz Time Pop Soda sponsorship for $250. Although, this isn't just free money, and it actually makes the game a lot harder in later nights, so that's great. This guy haunts me. Other than that, I didn't do anything else. I just used all my money and decorated my pizzeria. I'll call this one Mr. Hippo's Pound Town. 
when we finish off the tycoon segment we're gonna enter directly into the night segment which again has literally no animatronics apparently mr hippo doesn't want to kill me after i just named the restaurant that so since there's no threats throughout this entire night i'm gonna take this time to explain probably one of the most important things in this entire challenge our tasks in every single night of this game, there are always three different task categories that we need to complete. Order supplies, advertising, and maintenance. In the order supplies category, there is a total of five different tasks that we need to complete. And each of these tasks will take a guaranteed amount of time to complete. We need to click on them and wait for exactly 8.35 seconds. This also means that the entire order supplies category will take a total of 41.75 seconds to complete. Apart from this, there's also the advertising category, which has a total of three different tasks, with each of them taking 16.68 seconds to complete, meaning the whole category takes 50.04 seconds. And finally, there's the maintenance category, which also has three different tasks, and each of them take 12.52 seconds to complete, meaning the whole thing takes 37.55 seconds. All of this means it will take a total of 129.34 seconds to fully complete every single task and therefore complete the night. Obviously, this isn't how short the nights actually are because I need to take some time to, you know, misclick on some buttons. But it's just a very important thing that we need to keep track of when we create a strategy later in the video. So with all of that said, we have no problems making it all the way through night 1 because there's nothing that can kill us. However, when we finish every single task and log out for the night, we're not actually fully done with night 1. We still need to complete the salvage. During the salvage segments, we sit at a table across from an animatronic that we're attempting to salvage. In the case of night 1, this is the German bear that absolutely hates me. In order to complete the salvage, we need to play 5 different audio prompts, and at the end of each audio prompt, we need to mark on a piece of paper whether or not the animatronic reacted to it. The only problem being, if we pull up this piece of paper to mark the response, it actually covers our entire screen and increases our risk of getting jump scared by the animatronic. This is not only bad because, you know, we f die, but we also lose out on the money that we would have gotten from completing the salvage. So to make sure we don't get jump scared by the animatronic, we're given a taser that we can use to reset them back to their original position if they happen to move. Although, we can only use this taser 3 times before it starts to decrease the amount of money we get from the salvage. You might be wondering what exactly these salvage segments do for the challenge? Uh, basically nothing. Really, the only part of this segment that matters is the very end. Whether or not we get jump scared by the animatronic or complete the salvage, the animatronic will now be in our pizzeria. This means that during our next night, there will now be an animatronic crawling around the vents trying to kill us. So let's see how that works out in night two. One more time. Time to run it back. F this is like the third time I've restarted because I keep f doing the wrong thing. F let's see how much cash you have after dealing meth. Then we play duck. Duck time. And then 500. Mm, five, sh come on, give me 500! 100. F what the fuck? He yeah, motherfucker. Mr. Hippo! Mr. Hippo's fucking Wonderland, baby! Ah! Do -do 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 -do. Holy sh! What the fuck am I supposed to do? Holy sh! There's so many fucking cars! I'm gonna make this place fuck poppin', dude. When it, it, Mr. Hippo starts bumping some sh**, it's gonna f pop off. Oh, you just got looped, bitch! Holy sh**! Holy f**k! Oh my god! Oh, perfect. Oh my god. Name a better way to spend all of your money. I don't know one. <laughs> Don't jump out. What the fuck is going on with Foxy? If you move around... Zero turn away visitors. Watch this. F Holy sh**. Starting off night two, we're gonna instantly accept the next sponsorship, which is from Marty's Plungers for $500. 
After this, we're gonna play Midnight Motorists a few more times until we get $550 so we can purchase the Carnival Hoops arcade game. And now it's time for me to channel my inner LeBron James because I am really good at this game. The reason as to why I'm playing this instead of Midnight Motorists is because if we end up getting 20 baskets in the 30 second time frame, then we will actually get a 5,000 point jackpot. And since we all know I'm gonna get the jackpot, you know, every single time, this ends up giving us more money. Another thing that happened during the Tycoon segment is after we bought the Carnival Hoops game, we actually unlocked the final catalog of the game, the Rare Finds Auction catalog. This catalog really isn't that significant because everything in it is way too expensive, but you know, there's pickles. And finally, before finishing off the Tycoon segment, we purchased both the Lemonade Clown and the Fruit Punch Clown to increase the Pound Town aesthetic. My lawyer has advised me to stop talking, so we're gonna call this updated pizzeria super family-friendly pizza town. Um, Nick 830's pizza. Starting off the night segment, there's one very apparent thing that I need to talk about, and that's the fact that there is now an animatronic here. So, in order to completely understand how these animatronics are gonna work, especially in the later nights, let's talk about how these animatronics move. First off, before I explain any of this, I got pretty much all my information from It's Taken's video on the Five Nights at Freddy's 6 AI. Their video is amazing, and if you're looking for a more detailed analysis of the AI, I would definitely recommend checking out that video. First off, much like every other Five Nights at Freddy's game, the animatronics are going to be moving around in a very specific map. It's a rectangle. Here you go. When we start off the night, every single animatronic that is a part of the night will spawn at a random position at the top row of this map. In the case of night 2, we only have one animatronic, and that's Molten Freddy, so he could spawn here, or here, or literally at any position in the top row. And after they've spawned, just like every other Five Nights at Freddy's game, they will have a chance to move around the map, and this is what's known as a movement opportunity. However, unlike other FNAF games where animatronics would have AI values and those AI values would be compared to random numbers and whatever, in this game, every single animatronic, regardless of which one they are, has the exact same chance to move every single time, and that's 1 in 3. The only thing that changes from night to night to make the game harder is how long the animatronics have to wait until they can attempt a movement opportunity. So, in Night 2, animatronics will have a movement opportunity every 5 seconds, and if this 1 in 3 chance is successful, they will move to the next position on the map. But, you might be wondering, what exactly is the next position? Well, I'm gonna show you. Looking at a recreation of It's Taken's map, we can see how likely an animatronic is to move to each position on the map. So for example, if Molten Freddy is right here on the map and he has a successful movement opportunity, he has a 25% chance to move up, a 50% chance to move to the right, and a 25% chance to move down. And obviously, depending on where animatronics are, they will be more likely to move in some directions than others. This also means that it's possible for animatronics to move away from us, however, they're just more likely to move towards our office. And that's pretty much it for the basics of these animatronics. They're gonna spawn at the top row of the map and wait until their movement timer runs out. Once this happens, they're gonna have a 1 in 3 chance to move, and if this is successful, they will move to a position on the map depending on their RNG. Apart from that, there are just a few one-off things that happen during the night segment that I do want to explain because they're kind of important. One of these things is the animatronics will actually become more aggressive if we don't move. This means regardless of the night, if we spend too much time not moving, then the animatronics are going to get a lot more difficult. The only other additional thing that I do want to talk about in night 2 is probably the stupidest f thing I've ever heard in my life. The animatronics can teleport. You know, what's worse than being attacked by an amalgamating German bear that eats children? Being attacked by one that can break the laws of physics. For some reason, Scott Cawthon decided to do a f fat line of coke before coding this part of the game because he made it so that if animatronics make it to this top position on the map, depending on which animatronic they are, they will teleport to either the left or right vent opening. I really don't know why this is in the game, however, it's not as bad as you think it is because each animatronic can only teleport once per night. But like, why the f*** is this a thing? As for the challenge aspect of this night, it really doesn't exist because pretty much all the equipment in the game is used for crowd control, and there's no crowd if there's just one. 
So we're just gonna play this night exactly like night one. However, we do need to check the vents every now and then to not die. After we complete the night, we are required to do another salvage segment so we can get the completion ending. And this time, it's everybody's favorite animatronic, Peanut Head Jimmy Neutron. Oh. This salvage segment is gonna be pretty much the exact same as the one in night one, so we successfully complete it quite easily and move in to night three. Come get your candy here. I have candy all day, every day. <coughs> Nobody's gonna stop me. But now I need basketball. So I have no risk right now. Do I really feel like getting sued? Yes. Shout out to all my people who are being sued. <coughs> Rudy Mays and Midnight Motorist go over there. I could buy a p clown. Brother. I am- I am pick clown. Come get your pick here. I have pick all day. Fuck, I already fucked it. I have pick all day, every day. Pick, pick, pick. Yeah! The Brodna Jammies! Oh, I could get candy. Put Ned Bear up there. He's probably gonna fuck eat a kid, but that's fine. I don't want anybody tripping in the fuck pool trying to get to candy. I got it! Um. Oh, yeah, pick clown. Oh, I brought it back. Woo. Oh, I almost got 20. 20. Okay, now I need to focus. Nope. Yeah. I didn't talk at all because I need to listen. I need to listen. Three, two, one. How many turned away? Oh, baby! Real to me like that! Zero lawsuits. I don't get sued at all. I always come back. When we begin night three, we're gonna instantly do the exact same thing that we've done in both nights one and two, and that's except the next sponsorship. This time, it's gonna be Flo's Glossy Floss sponsorship for $1,000. I can't believe I said that fucking name. What the fuck? Other than that, we're just gonna be doing more of the usual. So just playing arcade games and buying stuff. But instead of just wasting our money on some random I pedo clowns, we're actually gonna do something pretty cool with it. This time, we're gonna be getting some achievements. More specifically, in this night, we're gonna unlock both the trash and the gang achievement, as well as the mediocre melodies. The first thing we need to do to unlock these achievements is purchase both the Deluxe Concert Stage and the Star Curtain Stage for $1,310. Once we do this, all we have to do is place certain animatronics in all five animatronic spots on the stage. So to unlock the Trash and the Gang achievement, we need to place Bucket Bob, Mr. Can Do, Mr. Hugs, Number One Crate, and Pan Stan on all five spots on the stage. Once we do this, we'll be awarded the achievement as well as $1,000. And believe it or not, this is the exact same thing we do for the Mediocre Melodies achievement. We need to place Orville the Elephant, Happy Frog, Mr. Hippo, Ned Bear, and Pig Patch on the stage. And once we do this, we'll get the achievement as well as $10,000. And that's pretty much gonna be it for the Tycoon segment. I bought some of the Rockstar animatronics and just played more basketball, cause I'm good at it. Um, just go to the night segment. When we start up the night segment, this is where the challenge starts to become, you know, a challenge. Because now not only do we have a German bear crawling around, but we also have a British person. Not, not that one. The crowd control aspect of the tools that I talked about in the last night now become apparent because there's two animatronics trying to kill us. So, now's the night we need to start thinking about a strategy, and that starts with understanding one very important feature of this game. Sound. When I say sound, I don't mean sound effects, like Molten Freddy scraping his wiener on the ground while he's moving in the vent. When I say sound, I actually mean the amount of sound that the player makes while performing tasks in their office, because believe it or not, but this actually matters. We're first told about this feature at the very beginning of Night 1 during the tutorial segment. Something to be aware of is that the ventilation system and your terminal are pretty loud and may prevent you from hearing things in adjoining air vents. We're basically informed that if we make noise, not only will it stop us from hearing stuff, but it also will attract the animatronics. Basically, he just tells us to shut the f*** up. Also, he then goes on to tell us about all the tools that we can use to get rid of this sound. However, you know, I can't do that. 
So, in order to survive from these two animatronics, let's try and figure out what making noise really means. The two things that we use in our office that make majority of the noise is our computer and our fan. Or should I say wind turbine because this is so fucking loud. If we have our computer on, regardless of if we're doing tasks on it or not, it will increase our chance of being heard by an animatronic by 40%. And if we have the fan completely on, it will also increase our chance of being heard by an animatronic by 40%. So basically, if we have both our computer and our fan on, we have a pretty high chance of being heard by an animatronic. Although, why does that matter? The only time being heard actually matters is when an animatronic is present in either the left or right vent. For example, let's say that Scraptrap is currently inside of our left vent. If our chance of being heard is way too high, and Scraptrap has good RNG and successfully hears us while he's in our left vent, then he will move into our office and jump scare us. We are able to stop this jump scare from happening by shining our flashlight down the vent, however, what happens if there's two animatronics at both the left and right vent? We're dead. So instead, we need to make sure our chance of being heard is really low, because not only will this save us from being jump scared, but it will also force the animatronics away from us, this time we just didn't need to use a flashlight. Pretty much, just the more noise we make, the higher chances we have of being jump scared. You know what, fuck it, just don't make noise. This does get a little bit harder when we actually start doing stuff, because our computer and our fan are not the only things that will increase our chance of being heard by an animatronic. The first of these things is absolutely f nothing. Regardless of what we're doing, there will always be a guaranteed 10% chance for an animatronic to hear us that we just can't do anything about. So yeah, technically it is impossible to make absolutely no noise, but you know, I'm trying my best. The second additional thing that will increase our chances of being heard is doing any of the tasks on our computer. Since my office computer is currently running on Windows negative 5, it makes a lot of noise and it increases our chance of being heard by 20% whenever we're doing a task. We are able to get rid of this noise by purchasing equipment, such as a quieter printer, but, you know, read the video title. And finally, the last thing that can increase our chances of being heard is, of course, ads. Did you really think for a second that I was gonna escape from this soda pop motherfucker? No. Whenever we get an ad on our computer, it will increase our chances of being heard by 20% until we skip the ad. And since I'm already talking about ads, I might as well quickly explain how they work, because why not? Every single sponsorship we accept during the Tycoon segment will increase the number of ads that we have during the Night segment, and it maxes out at 5 ads. Once we start the Night segment, each of these ads will have a 25% chance to show up on our computer screen every 20 seconds. And if they do appear on the screen, they force us to stare at the screen for 5 seconds until we can skip the ad, and they also make a shit ton of noise. Also, each ad can only play once per night, so up to this point we've accepted three sponsorships, which means in this night we will have three ads. And that is really all there is to say about night three. The basic strategy of this night is just turning off both the computer and the fan if animatronics get close to us, so that we decrease the chances of them hearing us and in turn jump scaring us. By making sure we're as silent as possible, it gets rid of the chances for a double attack from both the left and right side, since we can only be looking at one vent at a time. So now we don't have to rely on things like the audio lure to keep animatronics away from us, because hopefully, if we're silent enough, they will do it on their own. Obviously, this strategy is not gonna work at all in later nights, because there's way more animatronics, but for now, it works. After we complete the night, we're also gonna salvage Scrap Baby, however... You know, that's not very interesting. Hey, uh... 10k! Bruh. Fuck, I missed twice. I was trying to speed it up, so then I- Jesus, oh my god. Did I not get 21? I'm not LeBron James anymore. I think it's safe to say that. F F Stop doing that! F F yeah. Oh my god, bro. See, now I can buy f 
plates. Bro, I am. Uh, no! You can't come in here. I always come back. Mm. Five nights at pizza. We go instantly off the f bat. I turned around. Yes. <laughs> I told you I was beating it. I told you. Damn, you got f***ed up. <laughs> Don't come aggressive at me, huh? You didn't move. That's not... No moving. That wasn't move. You didn't move. Come on now. I'm too good! I'm too good! I don't get sued. How did I catch you off guard? At the start of the tycoon segment for night four, we're of course gonna accept the next sponsorship, which is the wacky wart pay sponsorship for two thousand five hundred dollars. And after this, if you can't guess what we're gonna do, um, I'm afraid you have dementia or something. We're gonna be playing more basketball and midnight motorist until we get seven thousand seven hundred dollars to purchase the prize king aka child gambling and now that we have the prize king we can waste all of our play tokens in an attempt to win some prizes some may call this an addiction i say mind your own f business since i live by the wise words of nick a sussy i never backed down and i also never gave up and we ended up winning five thousand dollars and now that I'm rich, you might be wondering what I'm gonna do with this money. Am I gonna save it and plan for my future? I- I bought a pizza light. So yeah. Apart from that, I really didn't do anything else. I just played Five Nights at Gambling. So since nothing cool happened, I'm gonna be talking about something that we've been doing during the Tycoon segment that is actually making this challenge easier. The thing that we've been doing in the Tycoon segment that has directly been making the challenge easier has to do with markdown items, specifically not buying them. At the beginning of every single Tycoon segment, there will be five different items throughout the entire catalog that will be marked down. These random markdown items have lower prices as well as an additional risk factor added to them. For example, during Night 3, the Prize King was actually marked down. As I mentioned previously, his usual price is $7,700 and he usually has zero risk. However, the marked down version only costs $1,942, but it also gains three risk. This would be perfectly fine because I don't really care if my risk gets too high. I couldn't give a f if a kid gets assaulted by the Prize King. However, when we purchase one of these markdown items, there is a chance for one of the salvageable animatronics to be hiding inside them. This means that if we get unlucky when purchasing our markdown items, an additional animatronic will be added to the night segment even if we haven't salvaged them yet. So to avoid being ambushed by every single animatronic as soon as possible, we want to avoid buying markdown items and only bring in the animatronics during the salvage segments. And that finishes off the Tycoon segment, so let's go ahead and try and beat Night 4's Night segment. To make sure we can create the ultimate strategy for these later nights, we need to completely understand all the important parts of this challenge, and that starts off with our temperature. If you were trying to figure out what the fuck the fan even does, well, now I'm gonna explain it. First off, we begin every single night segment at the lowest possible temperature, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is indicated by the number in the bottom right of the screen. And throughout the night, whenever we turn off our fan to decrease our noise, the temperature will rise at a random interval every 0.5 to 3 seconds. This is bad because if we go too long without turning on our fan and our temperature exceeds 120 degrees Fahrenheit, then we f die. We obviously want to, you know, avoid dying, and we do this by turning on our fan. Our fan will do the exact same thing but in the opposite direction, so it will end up decreasing our temperature at random intervals. However, as we know from last night, this also makes a sh ton of noise, so we need to balance both our temperature and our noise levels to avoid instantaneous death. And with that said, there's only one other thing that we need to understand before we can make the godly strategy. It is single-handedly the most important thing in this entire video, and it might be the only way that we actually beat this challenge. What is it? Sound. 
Wait, this time I'm not talking about the sound that the player makes. Instead, I'm talking about the important sound cues that allow us to know as much as possible without using our tools. The first one of these sound effects is very simple. It's this. Yeah, that's it. I'll play it one more time just so you know what it is. This is the sound effect that plays whenever the computer task that we're currently working on is finished. This sound lets us know when to check the computer and start doing the next task without even having to look at the computer. So we can start up a task and look down the vents to ward off any animatronics instead of just staring at our computer the whole night. The next group of sound effects are the animatronic voice lines, and here's a few examples of them. One big happy family. Fascinating. What they have become. It feels like my birthday. Did you have a gift for me? Each animatronic that is in this night specifically will have a voice line that plays when they enter either this position or this position on the map. The three animatronics, those being Molten Freddy, Scrap Trap, and Scrap Baby, can only play a voice line the first time they enter each spot. So one voice line on the right and one on the left, and every time they make it back to that position, if they've already played a voice line, they won't play another one. These voice lines aren't going to be super important because the audio that plays in the game doesn't have direction. This means we can't figure out if the animatronic is to our left or to our right, however, the audio does let us know when to panic and shit pants. And finally, the single most important sound effect group of this entire game is the vent noises. These vent noises get split up into two different categories, the loud vent noises and the quiet vent noises. In the quiet vent noises category, there are six different sounds. Regardless of which of these sounds play, they all indicate the exact same thing. These quiet noises will play whenever one of the animatronics enters either of these two positions. And regardless of how many times an animatronic enters or re-enters that spot, they will make a sound every single time. The other category of sounds, the loud vent noises, are very similar. There are also six different sound effects. However, these sounds will play whenever an animatronic enters these two positions on the map. This is exactly why the vent noises are louder, it's because they're closer to us. Also similar to the quiet noises, these sound effects will play every single time an animatronic makes it to these positions, regardless of if they've been there before or not. From just that, these noises don't sound much more important than any of the other sound effects in this game. But unlike the other two groups of sounds that I just talked about, these sounds have direction. This means that, depending on which position the animatronic enters, we will hear that vent noise being played in that direction. So for example, if an animatronic enters the loud position on the right, the sound effect will sound like this. And if they enter the loud position on the left, we're gonna hear this. And if you weren't wearing headphones, that sounds the exact f same, I'm sorry. This is crucial to the challenge because it allows us to not only know what positions the animatronics are in, but it also allows us to figure out if they're in the left or right vent, all without using the tools. So for this night's strategy, it's gonna revolve around us using our new ability of hearing to not die. We want to balance our noise levels and our temperature by turning off both the computer and the fan when we need to, because if either of them get too high, then we have a really high chance of dying. And while we're doing this, we're trying our best to listen out for sound effects that let us know where the animatronics are, because if they get too close to us, we need to flash our flashlight down the vents to push them away. And after a few attempts of using this strategy, we finally complete night 4, however, we're not actually done. We need to complete the salvage segment. This time, it's gonna be our final salvage segment of the game, which means our final animatronic, and that's Lefty. This salvage segment goes the exact same as every other one, we just do a animatronic Q&A. But once we're finished that, we're gonna head into the second hardest night of this challenge, Night 5. I 
I told you I never get sued. Fuck, I've already, oh my god. Wow, I am being absolutely f in the ass. Uh, Prize, f f prize king, baby. All right, boys. First try. First try. We think of first try. F Anybody down for some gambling? Second try. Maybe second try. Potentially second try. F anybody? Any, anybody want to call the third try? Maybe potentially third try. God damn. Honestly. I have uh, f no. Really? Ah! Clean and polish everything. Everything is clean and polished, dude. It was a decent amount of sensory overload for all the children. I don't have like subway surfers footage here, but I do have, you know, a lot of. Sh Dude, what did I do? I there was no noise, zero noise. What the fuck? Brother. Yes. Oh, oh my God, dude, that took like fifteen minutes. Oh my God, let's go. Lefty, holy fuck. I almost shit my pants, man. Don't hit the nene on me. I just simultaneously whipped the nene. You have completed the <sighs> I'm fu- dude. Let's fu go! And watch me not get sued. Watch it. I don't get sued. Better call Saul. Let's fu go! Alright, so before I actually talk about Night 5, I do need to quickly mention one funny thing. I was trying to get filler footage that I could use for this video, and while I was doing that, um, I deleted the save file. So yeah, F in the comments for Mr. Hippo's Pizza, but I just had to replay the majority of the game to get back to this point, and that's why our pizzeria looks a little bit different. Once I made it back to Night 5, I started back up the challenge, and we do that by accepting our fifth and final sponsorship, the Lally's Lolly sponsorship for $5,000. After that, I went into the catalog and purchased Lefty. He was marked down and costed a f dollar. If you're wondering as to why we didn't buy him previously, it's because if he's purchased before we actually salvage him, then he'll enter our pizzeria early, and of course, we don't want that. Also, if you're wondering why we're allowed to buy markdown items now, it's because every single animatronic is already in our pizzeria, so there can't be any hiding in the markdown items. And now that we have Lefty, we have all five of the Rockstar animatronics bought, which means we can put them up on stage and collect the Rockstar's Assemble achievement. With that achievement, I'm also awarded $20,000, which I'm of course gonna give to my lawyer because this thing is near children. You know what? Don't even think about it. I'm actually rebranding from Pound Town. That doesn't even exist anymore. Mr. Hippo isn't even here. This is Freddy's Casino. Speaking of casinos, I'm gonna do more gambling with my play tokens at both the Prize King and the Ball Pit Tower. Again, I'm not addicted. This has a really good reason. If we get lucky or use 10 play tokens on the Prize King, we can unlock Fun Time Chica. And if we get lucky or use 10 play tokens on the ball pit tower, we can unlock Music Man. Normally, both these animatronics are super expensive and almost impossible to actually buy, so instead, I'm just gonna gamble and try and win them. And once we successfully do that, because I'm really good at gambling, we're also gonna spend the rest of our money on the final animatronic of the game, El Chip. And with those three animatronics unlocked, we can put all three of them on the stage and unlock the final achievement of the game, the Posh Pizzeria. I know I said all of the achievement hunting was completely useless to the challenge, but I can buy pickles now. There we go, challenge complete. There's literally nothing else to do in this game. Whatever. So with my life goals complete, all I did after that was just play a bunch of different games. I talked to Candy Cadet, played some space pizza game, and broke my neck. And that, in my opinion, is a very successful pizzeria moment. However, we're now headed into one of the hardest nights possible, Night 5. 
This night isn't even the final night, yet it is still absolutely insane. First off, all four animatronics will have movement opportunities every 2.5 seconds. And if you remember, the very minimum amount of time that each night could be was 129.34 seconds because that's how long it takes to finish every single task. So that means the animatronics will have an absolute minimum of 52 movement opportunities each. What the fu- And since we can't actually complete every single task that fast because of the sound risk, we end up with almost 5 times that many movement opportunities throughout the entire night. So, needless to say, we really need a strategy for the next two nights. Luckily, we already understand every single thing we need to know about this challenge, so now all we have to do is make a strategy, specifically, the ultimate strategy. Before I explain the strategy that I used in this challenge, I do want to quickly mention one thing. While doing the research for this video, I came across a video by The Bones 5 that used a somewhat similar strategy. The two strategies were very similar, and also the video they made was just really good, so if you're looking for more FNAF 6 content to watch after this video, then definitely check out their video. And now, with that said, it's ultimate strategy time. Instantly, upon spawning into the night, we're gonna start up the first advertising task. We want to do these advertising tasks early, not just because they take the longest, but also because they're really loud. So, if we end up missing a sound cue and die because the printing is too loud, it's at the beginning of the night, who cares? While this first task is being completed, we want to keep our fan on, since our chances of being heard by an animatronic are already really high because our computer is on and we're doing tasks. Once we hear the first task be completed, we're gonna turn off both our computer and our fan and listen out for any vent noises we can hear. Turning off both things will decrease our chances of being heard by an animatronic all the way down to 10%, as well as get rid of any background noise that might stop us from hearing important sound effects. And once we turn off both the computer and the fan, we're just gonna sit there completely silently for a few seconds to make sure no animatronics are breathing down my neck. From here, once we've made sure that we're safe, we just want to stare down the vents and wait until we hear a loud vent noise be played in either the left or right vent. Once we hear this happen, we're going to immediately turn to the computer and start up the next advertising task, as well as turn on the fan. You might be thinking to yourself, well this is just a bad idea, why would you make more noise when the animatronic is really close to you? However, this is actually for a really good reason. Once the fan is on and the next task is started, we want to stare down the vent that we heard the loud noise in. This will pause the animatronic that played the loud vent noise, regardless of if they heard us or not. And after a while, since we're pointing our flashlight at them, this will push the animatronic away from us, and the best thing is, we were doing all of this while keeping our temperature down and doing a task. And as you can guess, after the task that we're currently doing is completed, we're gonna repeat the exact same thing that we just did. Turn off both the computer and the fan, wait for a loud vent noise while we're looking down the vents, when we hear one, start up the next task and the fan, and stare down the vent that we heard the loud noise in. We want to repeat this until the advertising tasks are finished, then we want to start up the order supplies tasks, and finally, the maintenance tasks. If you're wondering why we do the ordering tasks before the maintenance, it's not just because they're faster to complete, but also because the maintenance tasks don't make any noise, so we want to save them for the very end of the night. With all of that said, there are just a few fail safes that I implemented into the strategy, just in case something weird happens. The first of these fail safes applies when a surprise advertisement starts playing. When any of the 5 ads play, as we found out previously, they make a lot of noise. So when one of them plays and locks us into looking at the computer, really all we can do is wait until we can skip it. And after we skip it, if that happens without us dying, we immediately shut off everything to make sure no animatronics are inside of our vents. If there's no animatronics, then we just start the strategy back up like normal. But if an animatronic is close, then we wait with our flashlight pointed down the vent until it's safe to start the strategy back up. The other failsafe we have for this strategy is what we do if our temperature gets extremely high. Once our temperature reaches 110 to 119 Fahrenheit, we need to turn on our fan and turn off our computer. This is just to minimize the chances of us being heard, as well as making it easier to listen for sound effects. And all we want to do is just stare down the vents we hear noises in and wait until our temperature drops back down to a safe level. That safe level being around 65 to 75 Fahrenheit. 
Hopefully, by utilizing this strategy properly, we can make it all the way down to the final task. When this happens, we can turn off our fan to decrease our noise levels, because as soon as this task finishes, I want to slam my hand 8 inches into my keyboard and log off to finish the night. And that will do it for the ultimate strategy. Of course, this strategy isn't perfect, because this challenge is stupid. But this strategy uses the limited amount of stuff that we have to track the animatronics and matches it up with keeping us as safe as possible. So eventually, with enough attempts and an almost 10 minute long successful attempt, we finish off Night 5. After completing the night, unlike every previous one, there is no salvage segment because we already have every single animatronic in our pizzeria. So we head straight into the tycoon segment of Night 6, but before that, I have to flex how good my lawyer is. Right, driving in on them, and I'm on mom. What? How did I? Okay, I'm, I'm, I. All right. How long is this noise? You know how much I love gambling. Ah. Oh. 99% of gamblers stop before they win the jackpot. That one's not gonna be me. Oh boy. Yeah. When I said I was Michael Jordan, I did not lie! Oh, uh, why do you have to be marked down? Lefty's one dollar. Do I get rid of Chica? Because, like, Chica has the f Hello. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Los Pueblos Hermanos family. I got 21! No, dude. F why are you hitting the gritty? You literally lost! What the f Bow. Ooh, bro. I don't I I don't even need ten attempts. The f pickles are in poor condition. How do you get poor condition pickles? Before you was in animatronic found up my ass. Document results. Alright. What the fuck? What do you want me to fuck do? Boom. That's what I'm supposed to do. Put his ass up there. Boom. Heck yeah. Pickles! And I made absolutely zero fuck progress today because I spent the whole day playing basketball. If I, hey, listen. Nobody's gonna get chomped by him. Like, he's fine. The comeback! I actually came back. Pause. Spend my money on whatever the f I want. Yeah. I. I was. Okay, cool. I might be dead here. But we're f sending it anyway. Yes. Oh my f god. Yes. Oh, dude, I'm gonna have a f I'm gonna go into cardiac arrest and f die. Oh my god, let's go. I'm gonna f die. I'm literally gonna die. I'm literally gonna die. That the entire night took like f <laughs> Just like that, we've now made it to the final night of this game and this challenge, night six. And of course, we're gonna begin night six in the tycoon segment where we have absolutely nothing to do. This is the first time in this challenge where we don't have a sponsorship to collect and we also have no achievements to get. So, I'm gonna gamble. Look, I'm feeling it. I think today's the day I win the jackpot. F okay, it's obviously not gonna be first try. Second try is it's gonna work. F okay, but you know what they say. Third time's the charm, right? I already have that. Okay, this whole gambling thing. 
uh, it sucks. That's it. Literally all I did in the Tycoon segment was just waste my play tokens on a bunch of random games around the pizzeria, because if I'm being completely honest, I really don't want to do this night segment. This night is going to be very similar to night 5. We still have the same 4 animatronics, 5 ads, and the same amount of tasks. But as you can guess, the animatronics are somehow even faster, having movement opportunities every 2 seconds. Just to show you how ridiculous this night is actually going to be, the last night, night 5, took around 10 minutes and 24 seconds to complete. So if this night takes the same amount of time, each of the 4 animatronics will have a chance to move 312 different times. Yeah. This is going to make the simplest of things, like just listening for sound effects, completely impossible because four animatronics could all move at the exact same time. Also, because we're not allowed to buy equipment, our tasks are going to be really loud and really slow, meaning we can't even hear the animatronic sound effects in the first place. So can you guess in the comment section what I'm going to do for this night? If you said give up, then you're right. Since this night is just a significantly more painful version of Night 5, I'm just gonna mention everything else about this challenge that I haven't talked about yet. The first thing has to do with what I was just talking about, the sound effects, but more specifically, I'm talking about the voice lines. As I said previously, Molten Freddy, Scrap Trap, and Scrap Baby all have voice lines, but what about Lefty, the animatronic we brought in after? Lefty only actually has one voice line that he plays, and it sounds like this. That's right, it's nothing. He doesn't have a voice line, I lied. The only sound effects Lefty will actually play are the quiet and loud vent noises, because again, Lefty just doesn't have a voice line. So, yet again, the vent noises are still, without a doubt, the most important thing that we need to pay attention to. The other thing that's important for this night in specific is I actually modified the ultimate strategy, however it was only a few minor changes. One of the changes I made was for what we actually do after a task is completed. Instead of sitting and waiting for a loud noise to be played, instead I would just sit and wait while staring down the vents for a little bit, and if no noises were playing while I was waiting, then I would start up the next task. This new change to the strategy doesn't actually make the strat better, in fact it actually makes it worse. This is because it's just not better for survival, it's way more risky, however it decreases the night length significantly because we aren't waiting for a loud vent noise to play. So now a full night will take about 8 minutes and 30 seconds compared to the old strategy's 10 minute and 30 seconds. It still sucks, like a lot, but it's a little bit better. This new change also brings a couple additional things such as helping to keep our temperature down. Since we're doing tasks more frequently, and we only want to have our fan on while we're doing tasks, this means in turn we're going to have our fan on more frequently. Another minor change that I made to the ultimate strategy has to do with the advertisement failsafe. I got rid of it. Due to us having 5 different ads that could play during this night, pausing and waiting for animatronic sounds after each one would just take forever. So instead of pausing when an ad plays, I would just wait to skip the ad and instantly start up the next task, hoping that I don't get jump scared. Obviously, if I didn't think it was safe to start up the next task, then I wouldn't. I just made it so that it's not mandatory in the strat to pause after every single ad. And again, just like the first change, this change does not make the strategy better or safer at all. It just makes it faster. Finally, the last change that I made to the ultimate strategy has to do with how long we look at the vents. Previously, I was dying a lot because I would look away from a vent that an animatronic was in, so they would hear me doing my tasks and jump scare me because I was no longer pausing them. So for this night, I focused more on staring down one vent specifically, unless I heard a loud vent noise behind me. If I did, I would turn to the opposite vent and just hope that the animatronic I was looking at had already left. Overall, these three adjustments made the ultimate strategy a lot faster, but they also made it a lot riskier. But in my opinion, I'd prefer dying a bunch of times at the very beginning of the night instead of only a few times at the very end of the night. So finally, after multiple hours of attempts and even dying on the final task twice, we were able to finally complete Night 6 and therefore complete this challenge. The actual successful attempt for this night, at least in my opinion, was super clean. For the majority of the night, the temperature stayed below 100 degrees Fahrenheit up until the very end of the night. 
And we only had two ads appear throughout the entire night, which were both at the very beginning of the night, before the second and third advertising task. The only real mistake I had was accidentally turning off my computer during one of the advertising tasks before it was finished, meaning I had to redo it. So realistically, not a bad successful attempt, but of course, after we complete the final task, I click the log off button as fast as humanly possible to make sure I don't die on the final task, again. And with my heart rate at the very edge of killing me, it's time to watch without a doubt the coolest game ending out of all the FNAF games. And after we burn to death, we're awarded with our certificate of completion, and with that, the challenge is officially over, but obviously, the video isn't done yet. I'm sure it's possible to buy everything, but I f suck at this. I'm not Michael Jordan. Ah! Return to Candy Cadet again, and maybe I'll eat your ass. Nobody knows this, but I'm really just the best at this game. What the f- Three, two, one, blast off. <laughs> no! F I might be dead here. Okay, I'm just being absolutely buttfuck. Now I just have to hope that I don't get attacked from the left, and if I do, I'm dead. I got attacked from the left. Don't give me an eye, right? I'm dead. What in the fuck? I was gonna. What the fuck? Did I not look over there? Okay. That's not it, brother. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Dude. Bro. <laughs> Fuck, I missed. I'm sure, we'll do that one. I'm looking there! Ah, f <laughs> ah. Not a good experience. Zero out of ten would not recommend. Sucks dick. It's the f ads. Why did I say, oh, I'm gonna put ads in here? Why am I f stupid? I turned it on! You heard me turn it on. You literally heard me turn it on. No way! Five Nights at Freddy's 6. Yes, Mark. Listen, hold on. Never back down, never what? Never back down, never what? Huh? Act like I care. The f I don't give a sh. What? No, there's no way. What? I don't know what MLG stands for. Major League Gaming or something like that? No, fuck. <laughs> fuck you. What? I shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> that was the last task. I'm. Uh... I'm in the room. How would you suck on my f balls? I'm gonna die here, but I don't give a f anymore. You may not recognize me at best, but I assure you, I'm a f That's what you sound like, bro. F you. I hate these f robots. These robots f suck, dude. This game. F <laughs> what did I just witness? What was that? I can't even get a drink of water because I. F you. Lally's lollies. Lally probably likes touching kids. Oh, the f RNG is absolutely f <laughs> putting it out. No.
What the f No, no, no! This f game is so happy! Why are you so happy? Maybe I just have to sleep on it. Maybe I just have to sleep on it and never f wake up on it. Wacky wiggling weeder pace. How many times do you want to hit me the f hit the f answer button, Scott Coffin? That made me sh my f pants. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh! Oh! Oh my f god, dude! Oh! You played right into our hands. Holy sh! Let's go, dude! Let's f go! Finally, dude! Let's f go! Let's f go, dude! I told you! Today's the day! Today's the day I cook! I'm locked in, baby! Connection terminated. Yes! Come on! Come on! Let's go! I got him caught in Ikea, baby! I got him caught in Ikea! I would- I- I'm okay with burning alive. Come on! <laughs> Why is that kid on the left so mischievous, brother? What the f Please accept this certificate of completion. Let's go! My final Faz rating score, if you think you can beat that, you can't. Go f yourself. Oh yeah, and I guess I'll also just... Real quick. I will just show... That I haven't bought any equipment. Ta-da! And just like that, we've officially beaten Five Nights at Freddy's Pizzeria Simulator without any tools or equipment. Just like all of my other videos, despite what you hear me say, you know, in the video, I still had a lot of fun doing this challenge. This one reminded me a lot of the Five Nights at Freddy's 1 challenge because they were both super reliant on audio. This one I did really enjoy just because of how much audio there actually is if you just pay attention to it. However, this challenge still managed to be extremely hard basically just because of the RNG, but also because of how long the nights are. Before I shortened the strategy, each night was around 10 to 11 minutes long, which is just way too long to sit there that focused. But overall, I still enjoyed the challenge and hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. As I mentioned, you can go watch the proof for every single successful night on my second channel, Chicken Ninja 43 and of course, if you have any other FNAF challenges or just regular video game challenges that you want me to try out, leave them in the comments below. I do have a few very interesting videos coming up, but much like every other video I post, they're gonna take a long time. So, as you probably know by now, don't get your hopes up for super fast uploads, but as always, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.